2022 Australian Open is probably the most scandalous event in tennis history and one of the worst sporting events of all time. Not only for the magnitude, but also for the sheer number of scandals that took place. No matter how hard the so-called tennis journalists pretend like everything is fine and try to convince us to just move on, the truth is that this event has unmasked the deep-rooted corruption and hypocrisy in every aspect of the ATP Tour and the media that covers it. It will take more than one video to discuss everything that happened happened and all the dirty laundry of the tennis world that came to light. There is so much that I want to say about this disgraceful event that it's been hard to decide where to begin. In the end, I had to go with my gut and I decided that the right place to start is a subject that has been on my mind since last year's French Open. Toilet breaks. Why toilet breaks? Well, because when I hear of 2022 Australian Open, I think toilet. And more importantly, because this seemingly banal subject is tremendously revealing about the character of some prominent people in tennis, the state of the tennis media and the pervasiveness of double standards and hypocrisy. Without further ado, let's dive into a brief history of toilet breaks and see where the skid marks take us. Toilet gate became a hot topic after 2021 US Open match between Andy Murray and Stefanos Tsitsipas. When Tsitsipas took two 8-minute toilet breaks, a medical timeout and even halted play to switch rackets while he was down love 30 on his serve. After the match, Murray accused Tsitsipas of gamesmanship and said that he lost respect for him. But the most interesting part of the whole affair were statements of two prominent coaches about the situation. Tsitsipas' coach, Patrick Muratoglu, said that Stefanos learned this tactic from Djokovic in the 2021 French Open final when Novak took a toilet break after losing the first two sets and then came back to win the match. Because, of course, whenever something controversial happens, it's always Djokovic's fault. And Nadal's longtime coach and uncle, Tony Nadal, also chimed in. He said, I think that no follower of our sport can imagine Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal looking for extra sporting shortcuts to achieve victory. The way Tsitsipas acted was not fair. Rafa or Federer would never do that. Hmm. The reason why these two statements caught my attention was because I remembered something that happened a few months earlier that contradicted both claims. So I looked it up and accidentally learned way more than I expected. First, let's verify Patrick Muratoglu's claim that Tsitsipas learned the toilet break trick from Djokovic in the 2021 French Open final. Some of you may have already seen this video of the argument involving Tsitsipas and Medvedev after their 2018 match in Miami. Tsitsipas called Medvedev a bullshit Russian, which is kind of funny because Stefanos' own mother is Russian. But anyway, Medvedev confronted him and here's what he said. Hey Stefanos, you want to look at me and talk? Let him, let him, let him, let him. You have some problems, you go emergency toilet for five minutes during, and then you say... You go emergency toilet for five minutes. So it turns out that Stefanos was already familiar with the dark arts of the toilet three years before he met with Djokovic in the French Open final. And since Muratoglu was already his coach at the time, he knows this. Not only is his statement a lie, but he is mentioning Djokovic on purpose to deflect the controversy from Tsitsipas to Novak. And the media, of course, obliges. As you will see later, attaching Djokovic's name to every controversy, even when he is not involved, is not a coincidence, but a well-established pattern. Now let's talk about Uncle Tony's claim that Federer and Nadal would never do something like this. In the 2010 Australian Open quarterfinal, Federer played against Davidenko. Davidenko won the first set 6-2, and that's when Federer took a toilet break. So what, right? Maybe he really needed to go. Roger is a class act, a gentleman, and has won the Sportsmanship Award a record 13 times. He would never use the toilet break to gain an advantage, as Tony Nadal said. Well, it turns out that's exactly what Roger did. And he even went on to explain that he took the toilet break because he didn't like the sunlight in the arena. So he waited in the toilet for the sun to move. Quote, when the sun comes from the side, the ball seems half the size and is just hard to hit. I never take toilet breaks, but I thought, why not? I just hoped with every minute it took, the sun would move another centimeter. Okay, so Federer did use the toilet break to gain an advantage, but does that make Tony Nadal a liar? Maybe not. This happened 11 years before Uncle Tony gave his statement, so maybe he just forgot. Let's not call him a liar just yet. But then, 
there's the 2014 Wimbledon third round match between Kukushkin and Uncle Tony's own nephew, Rafael Nadal. According to a New York Times article, Nadal lost the first set, then used the three minute bathroom break and came back to win the match. Now, I know what Nadal fans are going to say. It's only three minutes and it happened once, eight years ago. It's not like Nadal does this repeatedly, like that evil Serb. Of course not. After all, Rafa won the Sportsmanship Award five times. In fact, since 2004, nobody other than Roger and Rafa has won the Sportsmanship Award. They are that good. Except Rafa did do it again, in the 2019 French Open final against Dominic Thiem. After Thiem took the second set 7-5, Nadal went to the toilet and this time he took 7 minutes to return to the court. Nadal, of course, went on to win the title. And I have to say, it is a bit suspicious that Uncle Tony doesn't remember this. It's his own nephew in a major final. And it happened barely two years before Uncle Tony's strong statement about Rafa's supposed impeccable honesty. And it is even more suspicious that Uncle Tony doesn't remember the 2021 French Open, when Nadal did it again, this time against Djokovic in the semi-final. After Novak won the second set, Nadal took an 8-minute toilet break. Eurosport commentator Simon Reid said, We've got a very long wait here. However good Nadal has been, and whatever he represents, this is just not on. Are we to believe that Uncle Tony didn't remember this? When only a couple of months later he declared that Rafa would never do this? Especially when you consider that this is not one incident, but a pattern of behavior for Nadal. If you have any doubts that Nadal is using dirty tricks, you have the recent Australian Open match against Shapovalov. After losing the third and fourth set, Nadal, get this, took a medical timeout and then immediately after took a toilet break. So he combined them to extend the break to 8 minutes. Not only that, but he also repeatedly stalled between points on Shapovalov's serve for which Shapovalov complained to the umpire. Here's the point. I am not saying that other players don't use toilet breaks in gamesmanship. They do. Even Murray, who ignited this whole debate, has done it too against Djokovic in the 2012 US Open final. And Murray even admitted that he used it to regroup after losing two sets, and then went on to win his first Grand Slam. But the issue here is the hypocrisy and dishonesty of the prominent people in tennis and the tennis media. How many times have we heard that Djokovic may be the best tennis player ever, but that he will never be liked or respected like Federer and Nadal? And one of the most frequently mentioned reasons is that Federer and Nadal are great sportsmen and gentlemen and Djokovic uses dirty tricks to win. But as you can see, that is a lie. It is a lie that Djokovic is a cheater, and it is also a lie that Feather and Nadal are two perfect gentlemen who never did anything wrong. But these lies have been repeated a million times, so many people believe them to be true, especially the casual fans. You will find countless mentions of Djokovic's supposed antics and dirty tricks, and most of them are exaggerations or flat-out lies. Even when Djokovic is not even involved, the blatantly dishonest media will somehow pull him into the controversy and drag his name through the mud. You want examples? As mentioned earlier, Tsitsipas and Murray were involved in the incident at the US Open, but Stefanos' coach pointed the blame at Djokovic and the media ran with it. And just a few weeks ago at the Australian Open, Nadal pulled every dirty trick in the book against Shapovalov and this is what Daily Mail's correspondent Mike Dixon had to say. Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic have more in common than just being brilliant players who own 20 Grand Slam titles each. They are also two masters of the art when it comes to stalling opponents. And I guarantee you, if Djokovic did what Nadal pulled against Shapovalov, this would be a monumental scandal. But because it's Rafa, it's fine. Just like it's fine that Kyrgios blasted a ball in anger and hit a kid in the crowd. And he didn't even lose a point. But when Djokovic accidentally hit a lineswoman, he was disqualified. And they said it was a stain on his whole career. But it's not only the media who is dishonest. Ask yourself this question, how can Tony Nadal lie with such impunity? Why is he so completely unafraid that somebody in the media will call him out? Because he knows that they will not. Because he understands that the role of the media is not to report the truth, but to shape public opinion. And since the interests who control the media support Federer and Nadal, 
the so-called reporters are never going to call out Uncle Tony on his lies. Instead, they will back him and continue perpetuating the myth about Feather and Adal's moral superiority. Just look at how they relentlessly lied and smeared Djokovic during the Australian Open saga. And on the other hand, completely ignored how Nadal traveled all over the world while he was infected and was then allowed into Australia with no questions asked. This is because Feather and Nadal are part of the establishment, together with ATP Tour, tournament organizers, powerful interests and the media. And because of that, the establishment takes care of them. And when needed, they take care of the establishment. So when Djokovic tries to secure more money for lower ranked players, the two supposed ambassadors of tennis, Feather and Nadal, oppose him. That's why no matter what they do, how they behave and what they truly represent, and they only represent their own self-interest, they are always portrayed in favorable light. On the other hand, Djokovic is not a member of that exclusive club. In fact, Djokovic is the enemy of the establishment and that's why he is treated as such. His whole career he endured hostile media, unfavorable schedules and unlucky draws. But since he declared that he wants to put an end to the monopoly in tennis, the establishment decided that it can no longer rely on those subtle measures to undermine him. Now it's an open war. This is a much larger topic with many aspects that deserve a deeper analysis and we will discuss it in this channel. We will talk more about the 2022 Australian Open, unusual scheduling, probability defying draws, money distribution, media bias, Feather and Adal's ties to the ATP, doping cover-ups and more. This video was just an introduction into those subjects. Until then, please consider subscribing to this channel and more importantly, share this video. Don't do it for Godkovic, do it for the GOAT. I'm